whenever you're ready. Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday, the day before Mother's Day. So, you know, every day really should be considered Mother's Day because <laughs> you wouldn't be here without her, right? You wouldn't be here without that energy that brought you into the world. And my thought has been, um, you know, that there's so many things uh, for myself that before becoming a mother, I don't think I properly understood because um, I don't think you can <laughs> before you've had the experience yourself. And my thought is that, you know, we joke all the time or we say all the time that mom never gets a day off and it's the truth, right? But what you don't get a day off from, in my experience anyway, is you don't get a day off from caring right? That's the thing is you might have children that are grown and are far away. You might have children that are out of your immediate vicinity. So there's nothing you can physically be doing with them, but there's something in the heart. There's something in the mind that never goes to sleep, right? That never is off once it's turned on. And that this is one of those aspects of being a mother or one of those aspects of just being in a mothering energy, because you can have this without having physical children is that that's what you never get a day off from, right? Is the caring. And so my thought is that for, you know, this celebration of the mother energy is that if every one of us went into that experience of not taking a day off from caring about whatever it is that opens your heart in the world, it doesn't have to be children, but it can be animals. It can be just the people in your life, grown or small, that are really important to you. But if we all went to that thought process or we went to that feeling place of never taking a day off from caring, right? and doing what we could in that day to uplift whoever it is or whatever it is that we are caring for is that the world would be a kind of different place, right? Because the more you open to that, and this is the teachings of yoga too, is that the more you open to that is you can't close it back up again, right? And that's part of the mother thing too, is once you have children, you can't just like pretend that you don't anymore, right? <laughs> whatever happens, you know, physiologically and mentally and emotionally, like that's there forever, right? Never a day off. So yoga is the same thing. It says that as we drop deeper and deeper into the place of the heart, into compassion, into where we hold the world as children, or we hold the world as beings that need to be loved and cared for, and that we're the ones to do it, is that we can't undo that once we drop deeply into it. So this is my, my suggestion, my prayer for honoring mothers for Mother's Day is to find what it is that is your uh, place or that is your being that unlocks that for you, right? Because once you do open in that way, again, you can't turn it off again. And this is what yoga asks us to do is to go as deeply as we can into those feelings of looking at the world as beings that we care for and don't turn it off, right? Consciously don't turn it off. Instead, keep moving towards it. Every time there's that cry, someone's in need, keep moving towards it, don't run away. Right? So honor your mothers, honor that mothering energy by never taking a day off from caring, right? Rest all of you, all that you need when you need it, but don't take a day off from caring about whatever it is that unlocks your heart. So comfortable seat if you're not there already. I'm letting the eyes close. And just for a moment, again, the image I'm going to give you is one of the forms of the goddess that really exemplifies this concept of the endless giving, the never taking a day off, but she is not one of the pretty forms. <laughs> So as you're sitting and you're breathing with yourself, just imagine that your head is removed. Just a headless meditation at the top of the neck, there is suddenly no head, no mind. There's just this completely open space. You can imagine it as the blue sky. Imagine it as the ocean, space. that everything that moves through you, all of the feeling, all of the love, all of the compassion, all of the things that we ask ourselves to generate in a yoga practice, it's as though as that moves through you, it simply exits out into that endless space. So everything that you are becomes shared. No holding back. If that feels like a lot, again, you're just breathing into the image that there is no head at the top of your neck. There's just space, open.
every time you want to reassert or put those boundaries back on that says, but this is what my mind can do, or this is what my mind can hold, you just drop it again. Blue sky. With that endless source of love and care, it's not something that you generate yourself out of your own body, but it's something that moves through you and is pulled from you. And it's endless. It's not yours. It's not mine. When we let it flow endlessly, we let it flow without restriction, then we always have enough. We always are enough. Just one more breath, the headless self. No limitations on what you can be, what you can do, what you can feel. And then bring the hands together in front of the heart center, palm to palm, your choice if you wanna put your head back on or leave it where there's that open space. And we'll open with the sound of Om, deep breath in. Let the eyes float open. Nice, you guys. Sorry, that almost a little weird. <laughs> Release the hands from in front of the heart center, please. And then come forward onto hands and knees, please, and start to circle your hips. So as you come forward, placing the hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips, start to rotate. Good, big or little, up to you. To the image that goes along, I said, you know, form of the goddess that's not one of the pretty ones. Her name is Chinamasta, and she is one of the forms that are sort of this um, ecstatic or dramatic transformation. So she's sort of in line with Kali, but not in the, you know, um, not in the battlefield reference. So her story generally, or the brief version of her imagery, is it says she's walking through the forest with two of her attendants. Move your hips in the other direction, please. And they start to complain to her that they're hungry. And they say, mother, we're so hungry. Can we please, you know, what can we do? And we're so hungry, we're so hungry, we're so hungry. And, you know, she doesn't have any food to give them. There's nothing around. So she's like, well, what can I possibly do? They're so hungry. And they just keep crying to her that they're so hungry. And so finally she stops and in order to feed them is she cuts off her own head. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely, right? She cuts off her own head and from her neck is this fountain of blood, right? But it's in these three streams that one goes to the mouth of each of her attendants and one actually goes to the mouth of her own severed head, right? That she is feeding herself. <laughs> Press back to child's pose, meditate on that image, please. <laughs> Suddenly we're in a zombie movie. Good. And with the forehead to the floor or making a little pillow with your hands, so you have something to press that forehead against. Even a block would work. Good. And of course the image is a little bit gory with the, you know, the thought of the blood, but the idea is that from within her, those three streams we consider to be the representation of the three main energy channels in the body, right? masculine, the feminine, and the place where all of that is united and divine. Walk yourself to the right, please, over your right thigh. So, of course, the symbology is not the blood itself, but the symbology is that from within her, from her very makeup, what she is, is there is this endless stream of nourishment, and it's that selflessness of, I'll give it because you're in need. I'll give it because you're crying, and I want to ease that suffering, right? That's the power of her. Come back to center and go to your left. And so I think we get confused as human beings when we say you should be selfless, which means that you should forget about yourself. And that's wrong. <laughs> that's not what is intended, right? Is to forget about yourself for the sake of others. 
but to let go of that feeling of restriction of there's so little that I, the individual can do, and that I have to hold something back for me because if I keep giving, then I'll have nothing left, come back to center. So we're learning that balance all the time, how to take rest when we need it, how to give care to ourselves as equally and as deeply as we give care to others. That's part of our learning, human learning. But the selflessness is, can you take off your head that determines this is a good place for me to care or a bad place, or I should not care about this and I should care about that. Or today's a day that I don't feel like caring about anything. Don't take a day off. Come back up to hands and knees, please. Press back to downward facing dog. So Chinamasta is this moment where the radicalness of it, right? If you cut off your own head, your own ego, that's always the symbology in yoga, is that if you take off that piece where you are judging what your care should be or how it should go or when and, and how it happens, that you open to that much deeper place where it is an endless flow and it's not yours. So it's not exhausting to let it go, to let it flow. Good. Slide forward to plank pose, please. Upward push up. Nice. Lift your chest just a little higher. Send your inner thighs a little higher. Beautiful. And then lower down slow to your belly coming through knees first if you need. Good. Rise up to cobra, a little baby cobra. So not your full expression of the pose, but a little baby breath in to lift the chest and then relax back to the floor. And then breathe up into cobra again, dragging back on the hands, feeling the upper back awake. Lift the chest forward and up and then exhale, release back down. Again, not going to your full, pushing through your spine, inhaling up, good. Just keep moving with your breath so you have this feeling of really rising up through the spine, but not with a feeling of trying to push to your edge. Good. So there's a fluidness to it, there's a flowing. Nice. So we say to get out of that state of innate exhaustion is we have to stop looking always to push ourselves to our edge. It's good to know where they are. And sometimes, yes, we want to find the edge so that we can feel what's beyond that. But if you're always seeking out the edge, you're always pushing yourself to find it. And you get into the habit of always pushing. Good. One more breath, rise up, pause. Good, and then slowly release back to your belly, please. Good, stretch your arms straight out in front of you, forehead to the floor, good. So you're lifting your right leg and your left arm at the same time. So as you inhale, right leg and left arm lift up like you're in a sort of half locust pose, good. And then release that and then switch to the other side. So left leg and right arm lift up, good. And then release, so keep alternating opposite sides, rising up, almost like you're coming into locust pose. So again, the back of the chest is lifting. Good, the leg is lifting. Beautiful, the back of the throat can lift with you. Nice. And don't just lift straight up, but actually have this feeling that you are pulling on that diagonal. So the ankle and the wrist are actually kind of moving away from each other. So that you're getting this sort of cross action on the back. Good. All right, those three channels, as they wind their way around the spine, the ida, the pingala, and the central channel, the shashumna, which is the spinal column. And these are all of the opposing energies in you, the masculine, feminine, sun, moon, right, left. And it's how they work with each other to manifest what is your divine self, right? What is your fully unified consciousness, your fully unified self. Good. So keeping the back really supple, the back really open, the mind really open. Necessary for that energy to flow. Good. Next breath in, lift your legs, lift both arms. So both legs, both arms, like your Superman, rise up. Good. And again, pulling long. So pull your feet back behind you towards the back of your mat, pull your armpits forward, and then lift the back of your heart, draw your navel in. Yes. Beautiful. And then release, please, planting the hands, lift back up to two hands and knees. Good, and find your way back to downward facing dog. Tuck the toes, lift the hips. Nice, you guys. Step the right foot forward between the hands, lunge. Good, inhale both arms to the sky, high lunge. Nice. 
Take your arms out wide, cactus arms, elbows bend, inner elbows spin forward, palms fall back, chest goes a little higher towards the sky. Good, bring that front knee forward over the ankle just for a breath so you really go into the full lunge. Yeah, good, you guys. And then take the arms up to the sky, please. Interlace your fingers, press the heels of the hands up. And then remember that feeling of the hollowed armpit. So as you push up, you're still trying to draw those outer arms slightly back and then push out through those pinky fingers. Beautiful, bow forward halfway, parallel to the floor, press out through your hands, keep your arms in line with your ears. Good, so again, those outer arms have to lift up, your low rib cage has to draw in, push your hips back just a little bit further so that you can push out through your hands, parallel to the floor. Good, and then release the hands down, please. Left hand plants right arm to the sky, spinal twist. Good, lean onto that left hand. If you'd like, flex the right foot, drop the knee wide. Good, lifting the hips just a little higher up and back so that you're not falling completely onto that front foot. Nice, one more breath, beautiful Harriet, nice Virginia. Beautiful, release that foot flat to the floor, please release the hand to the floor. Good, step your left foot uh, forward, top of your mat. Take both legs to straight, Uttanasana. Good, bend your knees, please, drop your head, take your hands to the back of your calf muscles, so the back of your shins. Good, and then draw your weight forward with your calves. So you're actually squeezing the calf muscles up onto the bone, but let your shins come forward and then press into your heels. Good, and then keep that feeling of your shins moving forward. Start to press your butt up towards the sky. And again, pause right at that moment before your knees are going to lock. Good, keep the hands at the back of the legs. Bend the knees again softly. Let your shins move forward, press into your heels. And then from your navel, start to press your hips back up towards the sky. Again, pausing at that point just before your knees are going to lock. Good, and then bend the knees again, letting the shins move forward, letting your weight come into your heels. Good, and then start to lift the butt again, straightening the legs almost to the point of a completely straight knee. Good, and then last time, bend your knees. Good, shins are moving forward, heels find the floor, take your butt back slightly. So it still feels like your shins are moving forward, but your knees are now closer to over your ankles. Drop your hips a little lower, sweep the arms up alongside your ears, chair pose. Good. Nice, you guys, butt moves back, but it still feels like your shins are pulling forward. Beautiful, come all the way up to stand, please. Nice job, take hold of your uh, left wrist with your right hand and pull to your right side, body stretch. Good, and as you're leaning, you're stepping onto, pressing through that right heel, lift up through your right hip just a little higher, and then see if you can float that left leg out to the, out to the side just a little bit. Toes continue to face straight forward. Good, so your hips are facing straight ahead. You're just lifting that, that leg up, turn your toes all the way forward. That's it, good, and then squeeze the legs back towards each other, take that foot back to the floor. Good, take the shoulders back up to center, switch the hands, so left hand holds right wrist, Pull to your left. Good, so now a little bit more weight in the left leg. Make sure that you are drawing up through that side of your left hip. So again, you're not sinking into the pelvis, but you're lifting up. And then start to slide that right leg out wide to the right. Again, toes continue to face forward. So it's like you haven't changed anything about the orientation of the leg. You're just lifting the foot to the side. Good, keep that left hip lifted. Nice. And then squeeze the legs back towards each other. Take that right foot back to the floor. Good, take the shoulders back up to center. Beautiful, exhale, hands down to the floor. Uttanasana, standing forward fold. Good. Did you give yourself a full exhale or did you stop? Deep breath in. Exhale completely. You can let the lips go if you want, make it audible if you choose, but a full exhale. Nice. And then step your right foot back behind you. So left leg is forward, lunge. Inhale, both arms to the sky, high lunge. Good, again, turning the palms forward, bending the elbows out wide to cactus arms, inner elbows slide slightly forward. So again, the arm position here is not meaningless, right? You take the arms slightly forward and then you hug your arm bones in towards the center of your back. So you get the chest and the back muscles to really wake up. Good, and then low ribs draw in, send your thigh forward a little more. So again, of course I'm mirroring goddess arms here. Good, two sides, right? In the central channel, three channels. Beautiful, take your arms up to the sky now, keep that engagement on your back, interlace your fingers, press the heels of the hands up to the sky, keep those lower armpits engaged. 
Good, start to bow forward. So your torso parallels the floor, belly moving towards your thigh and then press out through the hands, pull back through your hips. Good, scoop that low belly, front knee moves over the front ankle. Nice, Diane, good, Andy. Good, arms up alongside your ears, don't drop them. That's it, strength of your back. Good, release the hands down to the floor, please. Right hand plants, left arm to the sky, spinal twist. Good, let your weight fall onto that right hand a little bit more, let your hips push out wider to the right. And then if you'd like, flex that left foot, drop the knee wide. You can always take the back knee to the floor to make that variation more accessible. Good, nice, Susan. Awesome, you guys, chest open. Beautiful, nice, Mark. And then take that left foot flat to the floor again, release the left hand down. Nice job, step your right foot forward, top of your mat. Good, take both legs to straight, Uttanasana, forward fold. Good, Blo uh, blocks underneath your hands if you need, but your hands touching something. So if you can comfortably touch the floor, no problem. But if you need blocks, make sure you have them. And then come up on your tippy toes, please. Good, so again, this feeling of the shins moving forward, the hips moving forward, and then pulling all the way up, send your sit bones up and wide. Beautiful, and then on tippy toes, weight onto your left leg, take your right leg up and back behind you into standing split, already on your tippy toes. Good, yep, so you gotta keep all of the weight moving forward. That's it, yep, you're up on your tippy toes, right leg lifts into standing split. Good, and then release that left heel down to the floor, keep your hips really lifting to the sky, kick that right thigh higher, awesome. And then step all the way back, nice long lunge. Good, inhale the arms to the sky, high lunge, please. I know at any point, remember, if you're getting exhausted, just take off your head, you'll be fine. Take your hands back behind you, interlace your fingers, deep breath in, armpits up, chest up. Good, hug those muscles of the upper back. Don't just push the ribs forward, but draw in and back. Good, and then bow inside the front thigh, take the arms up and over any amount. Good, sending that left butt cheek back and in, right hip spins forward. Beautiful, don't stop squeezing the back of the heart. Awesome, you guys. Good, release the hands down to the floor, please. Nice job, drop the back knee. Good, take both hands inside your front foot. Good, walk towards the upper right-hand corner of your mat. Separate the hands, come up on your fingertips. Good, so nice wide hands here. So move your hands wider, that's it. And then as you exhale, again, letting yourself just move with your breath, bend the elbows nice and wide, dropping the chest towards the floor. So less of the, I'm bending my arms to do a push up, and more of just, I'm floating on my breath. So the inhale, you rise up a little bit straighter arms, exhale, you bend the elbows, dropping the chest any amount towards the floor. Keep those elbows nice and wide. So again, we're opening the chest. Nice, you guys. It is so funny in my mind, the things that I used to completely take for granted before I had a child, <laughs> even the emotional things that used to not really, you know, get to me now, it, you know, brings tears to my eyes when I see things, hear things. And I think of the great sages that say to us that, you know, if you're walking through the world and there's not consistently things that are bringing tears to your eyes, because you feel so deeply about the suffering that others are experiencing, that you are experiencing, then you're missing something, right? You've turned something off inside. Walk yourself back in. Good. Lift that back knee, step back downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Good, and then drop down to the knees, please. Take a child's pose, hips back to your heels. Again, something underneath your forehead, whether that is the pillow of your own hands or maybe a block. Not only does that sort of stimulate, we say the space of the third eye, where again, we have this sense of unity. We have this sense of coming, everything coming back together. But it also quite simply, when you press a lot of points on the forehead as it helps to relax the nervous system. Get us, gets us out of that mode of being always in fight or flight. If I always have to push, I always have to keep going. So deeper breaths and just a little bit of pressure Moving that feeling, right? The ego feeling or the mind feeling of I have to keep running. 
Instead, can you be that endless source where things just move through you? Because if you were not restricting who and what you are, right, you would be everything. We'd have this endless source of energy. Good. Bring yourself back up to hands and knees and press back downward facing dog. Beautiful. Walk your feet forward towards your hands. You can jump if you want to. Good, standing forward fold, Uttanasana. Nice, Mark. Good, again, blocks underneath your hands if you need or fingertips on the floor, just make sure you can comfortably touch something and then come up on your tippy toes again. Shins moving forward, hips moving forward. Good, that's part of it. And that might feel like it's a little bit more off balance, but you're actually aligning your joints here the way that you want them to be in a standing forward fold. So memorize this feeling, right? And then weight onto your uh, hmm, left leg comes up and back. So weight onto your right foot, please. And then slide that left leg up and back to, to standing split, still up on your tippy toes. Yeah, good. So you're taking that energy of already being super lifted and just lifting it higher, right? Elevation, good. It's the crazy thing, right? If I said standing split is you wouldn't naturally go to this experience, but the more that we are in already a state of elevation of keeping ourselves in a state of elevation is it's not so difficult to lift it a little higher. Let that right heel soften towards the floor, kick that left thigh up a little higher. Again, staying really lifted through the low back, lifted up through your spine. Awesome, you guys. And then step all the way back, nice long lunge, please. Inhale, both arms to the sky, high lunge. Good. And then take the hands back behind you, interlace the fingers at the low spine, chest really open. So again, just like you had in cactus arms, that feeling of hugging the armpits, of hugging the muscles of the upper back, do that. And then start to bow forward, taking the arms up and over any amount, keeping that hug of the lower armpits, the, the hug of the upper back around the shoulder blades. Good, keep the back of your throat lifted just a little bit so the head doesn't hang below the shoulders. Nice. Awesome, you guys, send your hips back just a little bit so don't put all the weight on that front foot. Use the back leg, yes. And then release the hands down to the floor. Nice job, you guys. Walk your hands inside the front foot. Good, drop the back knee. Walk your hands towards the upper left-hand corner of your mat. Come up on your fingertips. Again, nice wide arms. And then again, you're breathing your chest down towards the floor on the exhale and then rising up on the inhale. Good, the connection of the arms into the shoulders, the shoulders into the chest. Nice. Right, so Chinamasta is completely about our internal flow of energy and how that is connected always to the divine source. And again, whatever it is you think that you're giving to the world, if you associate it as it's yours, right? The egos belongs to this identity. It belongs to this small self because you're going to get tired a lot because then everything that you give, you have some sort of attachment to, you have some sort of expectation for, you have some sort of um, feeling that it's a part of you instead of it just being this part of consciousness or this part of, you know, the loving energy that is animating everything. That's Shakti. So we start to learn how to be selfless in that way where we don't hold that energy to be ours, but where we know that we are the vessels, we are the ones that help to uh, integrate it into the world, spread it into the world for those who need it. So wherever that is in your world, don't take a day off. If you care about something, care about it consistently and find your way to interact with it in an uplifting way. Come back to stillness, please. Good, walk your hands back in. Lift that back knee, step back to downward facing dog. Good. And slide forward to plank pose, upward push up. And lower down slow, coming through knees first if you need. Good, bend both knees, kick your heels in towards your butt. Reach back for the foot or the feet or the ankles if you can. And if reaching the feet is not happening today, then hands alongside your ribs like cobra. Good. Nice. And first just press the tops of your knees 
down into the floor and feel like you're popping your butt up towards your heels. So you're drawing those heels in towards your butt and then try and lift your butt up towards your heels by pressing down through your knees. Good. And now scoop your low belly here. Imagine that you're lifting your hip points forward and up towards your low rib cage and then hollow your low rib cage in as though you're gonna connect it to your hip points. Good, and then bend your elbows just a little bit so you feel the front of your shoulders, the front of your arm bones lift. Nice, and now add that pressure of the feet into the hands. Good, and then start to lift the thighs, lift the heels, lift your chest, bow pose. Good, without just pushing your hips into the floor, keep this feeling of the butt lifting slightly, of the pelvis tilting, hip points forward and up, rib cage in and up. So it's like the back of your heart is gonna lift to the sky. Good, kick those heels back. Nice, one more breath, lift the thighs, lift the heart, and then slowly release, nice job. Let the feet go, forehead to the floor, or again, make a pillow with your hands. Turn one cheek to the side. Yogically, we say that when we celebrate the divine mother is that it has nothing to do with it being a female energy. Of course, there's the birth mother or the way that you came into the world, but typically we have many mothers, many energies that serve that nurturing purpose or that nourishing purpose for us. And sometimes those mothering energies don't even have to be female, they can be men. Every one of us has the place in us that is able to hold deep compassion. It's able to hold deep feeling, not just for ourselves, but for the world. And when we tap into it, male or female, we tap into that source energy that is both, that is all. And maybe we don't get so tired thinking, I can't do it. I can't do it all. I can't keep meeting that need. You don't have to but you can continue to care consistently and continue to pour that energy into the world in the most uplifting way. And it'll find its way to where it needs to go, right? Your own rivers of, <laughs> your own rivers of blood. Good, come up to Sphinx pose, please, up on your forearms. Elbows as wide as your shoulders, palms pressing down into the floor. Good, tuck your chin in towards your chest, round into your back rib cage, and then tuck your toes and again, as though you are lifting your butt first, right? Get into that low belly. So you're popping your butt up towards the ceiling. Then lift your knees up off the floor so you come into a forearm plank. But again, don't work from you know, the hardest places. Move your hips up first. Good. And then once you've got your hips up, you're in the plank pose. Lift your chest forward and up. Drag back on the arms, chest open. Nice. And then start to walk your feet forward, lifting the hips high, coming into dolphin, dropping the head any amount, but keep your armpits lifted and moving forward. Move those legs, move those feet. Good, and then pause. And then walk yourself back to that plank pose, forearm plank. Good. And then lower the hips back down to the floor. Please come back to Sphinx, lifting up through the chest. Good, without popping the ribs forward, right? So you keep your ribs engaged, but you're continuously rotating the collarbones up and wide. You're continuously rotating the sternum forward and, and up so that you get this rotation on the shoulders. Good, deep breath in, lift through the top of your head. Nice, and then drop the chin towards your chest again, round into your back, tuck the toes. And again, pop, pressing in maybe to the knees first, pop your hips up and then lift yourself up into forearm plank. Good, and then once you have the hips in plank, lift the chest forward, take that roundness out of your shoulders, lift the back of your throat. Good, drag back on the arms, nice. And then start to walk your feet forward, lifting the hips, coming back to dolphin. Good, head comes in line with your spine. So if you wanna drop the head here so it's just a easeful lengthening of the spine, go for that. You don't have to look forward. If looking forward feels better, do that. Good. Up on your tippy toes, please, if you can. So again, lifting just a little bit higher through the low belly, through the spine. Awesome. And then soften the heels, walk yourself all the way back to forearm plank. Good, chest lifts. 
Nice. And then lower the hips down to the floor, please. Back to Sphinx pose, chest up. Drag back on the arms. Good. And then in your Sphinx pose, please, chest is still lifted. Bend both knees, kick your heels in towards your butt. Good. Again, pressing down through the knees. Feel as though you're lifting your butt just slightly higher. And then lift those hip points forward and up. Good. Again, the imagination here with the elbows bent, of course, it's not going to happen, but imagining that again, the back of your head is going to find your heels. So you're lifting your chest super high and rooting down through the front of the knees, lifting the front edge of the pelvis forward and up, ribs in. Beautiful. Back of the heart to your heels. Nice, Susan. Nice, Virginia. And then slowly release. Nice job, you guys. Good, slowly walk yourself back up to hands and knees, press back to child's pose. Again, that little bit of pressure on the forehead, however you want to find it, either a pillow with your hands or a block or just the floor. Good. All those chronic conditions that we associate with moms that we almost uh, glamorize, right? That she's always tired and she's always giving and, you know, this, that, and the other thing. That this is but the human condition, right? It's not just mothers who do it, but mothers do it in a very, very particular and very public and very open way. <laughs> but if all of us could touch that deep place inside that says, I care so much that I will never stop giving. And we might see many things change. We might see many things happen. But we stop ourselves. I'm not enough. I don't have enough. I'm too tired. Not enough time. Not enough money. Too much effort. No thanks, right? No one ever says thank you. That's another mom thing, right? <laughs> Walk yourself back up to hands and knees. Downward facing dog. Or hilariously, when you have a toddler is that, you know, you do something great for them and they turn around and say, they say thank you to the other parent. <laughs> you get over that too. Right leg up and back behind you. Down dog split, please. Bend the knee, kick your heel in towards your butt. Stack the right hip on top of the left. Maybe you've never had that happen. It happens to me a lot. Good. Point that knee down towards the floor, please. And then take that knee forward towards your nose. So bring it forward towards your nose. Armpits over your wrist. Squeeze in. Good, and then send that leg up and back behind you, down dog split. Bend the knee again, kick your heel and stack the right hip on top of the left. Good, open, open, open. Nice, and then point that knee down towards the floor, please bring it forward again, try to touch that right elbow, lift it up as high as you can towards that upper right arm. Good, and then sweep the leg up and back, down dog split. One more time, bend the knee, kick your heel and stack the right hip, open, open, open. Beautiful. And then point the knee towards the floor, bring that knee forward and wide pigeon pose. Knee goes towards the right wrist. Good. Turning that left hip point forward, sliding the left leg back. Good. Pressing into the front shin. Again, either a pointed toe or slightly flexed. Good. And then start to let yourself walk forward, find your resting pigeon. Again, maybe you put a block underneath your forehead or have your hands as that Again, pressure on the forehead if you're coming that low. Maybe you hang out on the forearms like Sphinx pose. Good, if you're on your back, fantastic. Good, move your weight just a little bit more towards the left side, towards your left side sacrum if you're on your back. There you go, Diane, good, Andy. So wherever it is that you feel drawn to pour yourself into, it's my suggestion, my request for Mother's Day, right? Is that I want you to do that and don't take a break. It doesn't mean that every day you have to exhaust yourself trying to make something happen, but every day you put your thoughts there, you put your energy there, you put something there. What can I do? What can I give to this world that is suffering? 
And at the same time, that becomes what can I give to myself because I'm suffering too, right? That's compassion. Good. And if you're on, if you're on, if you're in pigeon facing the floor, walk yourself to your right just a little bit. Walk your shoulders to the upper right hand corner of your mat. That strange place of being selfless, meaning that you do not identify as the restrictions or the limited version of yourself that is only able to do so little in the world. Instead, you become the expanded version of you that is able to do so much. And you're not giving away anything that is yours as you're moving from that place of source, endlessness. Walk yourself back to center if you are on your belly. Good. And then walk your hands back up. Nice, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. If you're on your back, start to find your way back to downward facing dog. Good, and then everybody steps back. Downward dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Good, slide forward to plank pose just for a moment, lift the chest up. And that's to give yourself this sense of really lifting the collarbones up. So almost like you're trying to bring this into a place where you could come into a back bend. So pull up, lift your chest. Yeah. Nice. And then from your pelvis and your inner thighs, lift your hips up and back and lengthen your spine. So it's like you're trying to keep your armpits over top of your wrist the whole time. Pull forward with the upper chest, but pull back with the inner thighs. Pull back with the upper thighs. Awesome. And then left leg comes up and back behind you. Down dog split. Good. Bend the knee. Kick your heel in towards your butt. Stack the left hip on top of the right. You get an opening. Good, point the knee down towards the floor. Bring that knee forward towards your nose, straight ahead, armpits over your wrist, squeeze in and up. Send that back thigh up a little higher. Good, and then send the left leg back and up to down dog split. Bend the knee again, kick your heel in, stack the left hip on top of the right. Good, and again, you're exploring, right? What is the hip willing to do every time you come into this position? Where is there the feeling of openness? Point the knee down towards the floor, bring it forward towards your left elbow or left upper arm, squeeze everything in and up. Good, a little wider with the knee. Nice. And then take the leg up and back, down dog split. Bend the knee again, kick your heel and stack the left hip on top of the right one more time, open. Good. And then point that knee down towards the floor. Please take the left knee forward and wide, pigeon pose. Ekapada Raja Kapotasana. Good, right hip spins forward. Nice active front shin. So you're pushing through that shin, not just resting your weight on it. And then once you've settled yourself, walk yourself forward onto the forearms, onto the elbows, blocks, whatever it is that you're using. And again, you can make that little pillow with the hands or find something that adds that little bit of pressure to the forehead. Good. letting go of our thoughts and our feelings about how things should go, how we want our help to re be received, how we want our love to be received in the world. That's the kind of selflessness that Chinamasa says. When you do that, you radically become unified with your spiritual self, right? You become unified with uh, that source energy, divine energy. Because you're no longer thinking about it. You're no longer thinking about it. You're just living it. You're just being it. And so can we practice that level of selflessness and also that level of compassion? Or no matter how tired we are, we rest when we need, but we don't let the feeling of care for the world disappear. We don't push it aside because I just need time for not caring. <laughs> and once we unlock that deepness of the heart, can we not try and shut it down again? Because we really can't. That's what the sages say is when you get to that point where you truly open to that, you can't unfeel it. You can't unknow it. So 
Uchinamasa, the removal of your head, the removal of that part of you that limits your ability to care, your ability to feel. It gives you the ability to feel everything as deeply as you can without getting upset or overwhelmed by it. If you're on your belly, walk your shoulders towards that upper left-hand corner of your mat. Good. A little more weight on that right side sacrum, Diane. There you go. Mm -hmm. Good. It is interesting that in the symbology, the forms of the goddess that are the most fierce looking or that are the scariest are often said to be the ones that are actually the most loving. The ones that take you to the deepest places of yourself because they take you through those areas that we don't want to look at or that are uncomfortable to look at or that are challenging to integrate into our thinking, into our awareness. So Chinamasa is this radical kind of transformation that occurs when we learn how to be selfless in that way. And we become the conduit for compassion. We become the conduit for all of those spiritual principles to just move through us. It's not ours. It's not your compassion. It's just compassion. It's not your love, it's just love. And then it can flow to wherever it needs to go and you're not exhausted. Walk yourself back to center if you're on your belly. Not saying it's easy, I certainly have not mastered this myself, <laughs> but it's what we practice for. Good, walk your hands back in please. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, find your way back to downward facing dog wherever you are. Good. And then go ahead and step or jump your feet forward to the top of your mat. Good, standing forward fold, Uttanasana, there's a nice jump area. Good, again, blocks or something underneath the hands come up on your tippy toes, let your weight move forward. Good, and then let the heels soften down towards the floor, bend your knees like you're dropping into chair, but keep your hands on the floor. Good, as your hips drop, Good, scoop your belly, round your back. So just pull your belly away from your thighs and drop your hips a little more. Good. And then relax that rounding, stretch your hips up towards the sky, come up onto your tippy toes again, letting your hands rest on the blocks or the floor. Pull up, pull up, pull up, hips high. Good, and then release the heels towards the floor again, bend your knees like you're coming into chair, but keep your hands on the floor. Good, thighs dropping. Good, knees, hips moving back, slightly back in space, round your back. Good, dropping the head, awesome. And then start to take the legs back towards straight. Again, just before they lock into your knees, come up on your tippy toes, pull up through your hips. Good, so it's like the hip creases, the thigh creases are what's pulling you up. Good, and then let your heels soften towards the floor, please. Bend your knees, dropping your hips like you're coming into chair. Round your back, pull your belly away from your thighs and then stretch the arms all the way up. Yes, come to chair pose this time, full chair, Utkatasana. Fierce. Good, hands to heart center, please. Prayer twist, right elbow to the outside of the left knee. I know I always do that to the left first. <laughs> it's just what I do. Good, come back to center, please. Twist the other way, left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Good, keep that left knee moving back in space. Keep your hips moving back. There you go, nice, Andy. Good, come back to center, arms to the sky. Lift your heart, drop your hips. Yes, still in chair. Just lift your heart, drop your hips. Good, and then release the hands to the floor, straighten the legs and bow. Nicely done, you guys. Separate your feet nice and wide. Turn your toes out, 45 degrees. Bend the knees, come down, squat. Good. Drawing those armpits back and wide, drawing your shoulders towards the center of the back, chest up. Like you have no head, you are just this fountain of that source energy. And it's not only feeding the world, but it's feeding you. And that becomes effortless because it's not yours. So you don't have to worry about where it goes or how it goes. You just have to care. <laughs> it's the one prerequisite, you have to care. 
And then release the hands down to the floor, please. Come down gracefully to sit on your butt. Good, stretch the right leg out in front of you. Left foot to the inside of the right thigh. Let your knee go wide. Good, inhale the arms up to the sky. A little twist to your right, bow over the right thigh. Janu Shirshasana. So whatever in this world brings you to tears, pay attention to that. And put your, put your awareness there of what can I do to ease that suffering. And it might just be that you meditate. It might just be that you hold a loving energy for those beings that are suffering. That means a lot, does a lot. And then you include yourself as how can I remove the suffering I impose on me from the world? Good. One more breath, turn your belly just a little bit more, maybe taking the left hand to the outer edge of your right chin. Good. Maybe coming into more of a twist, bringing the right hand either to the sky or to your lower spine, turn the ribs open. That's it, nice mark. Good, Virginia. Awesome, you guys. And then turning the belly back towards the right thigh, release the twist and walk yourself all the way back up. Nice, switch the legs, please. Take the left leg out in front of you. Bend the right knee, bottom of the foot to the inside of the left thigh. Inhale the arms up to the sky. Little twist to your left, and bowing over that left leg. Watch that your toes are not falling in or out at a crazy angle. Chinamasa is also said to symbolize, again, the radicalness or the hugeness of our internal energies. Well, all of your internal energies, the Kundalini, Kundalini Shakti, what we consider, consider to be our energy that is procreative or just regular creativity, all of it. She says when it is radicalized or when it is sent in all in one direction, it becomes so powerful like lightning. You can imagine that, right? That what pulls lightning down to the earth is there's this sort of magnetic, you know, charge against charge or the electrical charges, they pull each other towards each other. It's the same thing is that all of the love that we have or the source that we, that we are is pulled into the world where it needs to go, like lightning. Move your belly just a little bit more towards that left thigh. Maybe bringing the right hand to the outside of the shin. If you're going for the twist, left hand can come to your lower back or left arm to the sky. Turn the ribs open. Nice, Mark. Good, Harriet. Nice, Diane. Nice, Andy. Good, Susan. Good, and then release that arm, unwind your twist, turn the belly back towards that thigh, and then walk yourself all the way back up. Nice, you guys. So bend both knees, scoop forward, come onto your backs. And planting the feet, knees bent. And the arms alongside you into robot arms or the arms can be straight, your choice, setting up for bridge pose. So make sure that your knees and your feet are in line with each other, hips width, good. And then as you press down through the upper arms, lift from the back of your chest and then start to float the ribs up, float the hips up into bridge. So again, it's not a pushing up into bridge, but it's a floating from the back of your body, rise up. Good, and press down into the feet and press down into the upper arms and feel elevation, not just pushing, but rising. And this is what we can cultivate in our life that we reorient ourselves to move through life in a way where we feel ourselves rising, not always pushing. Good. One more breath, drag your heels towards your butt, your butt towards your heels. 
And then slowly unwind the spine. Again, softening it down, maybe one vertebra at a time. Don't just drop your hips. Good. Nice, you guys. And then draw the knees in towards the chest, please. Good, your choice of a spinal twist. If you wanna do both knees to the right, you can do that. If you'd like to stretch the right leg out, bring the left knee over one leg to the right, go for that. If you wanna wrap the legs, left leg over top of right, knees falling to the right, lots of choices. Good, so your choice of a spinal twist. And the things that nourished you, the masculine, the feminine, the sun, the moon, and the place where they become unified, where they have never been separate. Three channels. It's all the same energy, whether it looks like it's one or the other or connected, it's all the same. When we get into this reality that that energy does not belong to us, the ego self, it doesn't belong to this body and this mind, but it's what creates and animates this body and this mind is we can do so much more, be so much more. And we can relax about it. Come back to center, please. Take your twist to the other side. Again, whatever version you would like. Does not have to be the same version as the first side. Not all twists are created equal on any given day. We are finding this or looking for that feeling of openness from the lower spine to the upper spine, the back of the heart, back of the pelvis. So we open up those channels of the back of the spine so that this energy can flow freely. And when it does flow completely freely and we have really practiced that selflessness, then we more easily experience what they call that Kundalini awakening where the energy literally sweeps us away. We become drawn into it instead of thinking that it's flowing through us. So headless, you take off your mind and say, I am immersed already in this endless energy. So I can let it move through me. And as long as I don't hang on to it, I won't be exhausted. You still got to rest, right? You still got to sleep, be realistic. But you don't have to stop caring. You don't have to fall into that place of overwhelmed and numb. Come back to center, please. Hug the knees in towards your chest. Good. And then place the feet to the floor. Bottoms of the feet come together. Let your knees drop wide to Baddha Konasana. If you have a couple of blocks and you'd like to place them underneath the knees or the thighs, make it a little bit more of a supported, restorative position, go for that. And then finding your comfortable position for the arms. So this is a segue into Shavasana. So anything that you need for Shavasana, have it here. And your arms can be alongside you. The arms can be overhead. The hands can be resting on the belly or the belly and the chest. Good. And just find yourself falling into that state of being open. Being open, maybe headless. Blue sky. And at whatever point you feel that you wish to stretch your legs out for Shavasana, of course, you can stay in Baddha Konasana the whole time if you'd like, but at any point that you feel you are ready to stretch the legs out, then do that. Rest in the way that your body, your mind is calling for rest.
Very gently, bring the awareness back to your breath. Letting the body begin to stretch and move in whatever ways serve it well. And as you're ready, draw your knees in towards your chest and roll to your right side. And take a moment before you begin to push the floor away, come back to an upright seated position. Bring the hands together in front of the heart center, palm to palm. Maybe for just one more moment, remove your head and stay in an open place where you know that there's this source of endless energy that doesn't come with the expectation or the demand that you do everything, right? That's what we have to undo in our mind that somehow just because we maybe have the energy for something that we have to spend it, that this endless energy is there to enliven you as well as the world. So you give where there is a need and where you are in a position to give. Don't go looking for reasons. Don't go looking for excuses to deplete yourself. That's not how you care. But in the moments when you can care, you don't turn it off. You don't turn away. You keep those channels open, open, open so that you can continuously give to the world in an uplifting way, in a loving way, compassionate way. So this is how we learn to embrace that mothering energy, whether we are male or female, actual biological mothers or not. As we learn to not take a day off from caring, not take a day off from your heart being really open to the world that you are a part of and also to that divine energy that you are a part of. You bring one into the other, like a lightning bolt. You become the conduit. And Chinamasta says that that's what happens when we can practice or master that idea of being selfless and in that what we do does not belong to us. So don't take a day off. Do your mother's proud. Don't take a day off from caring and find the place in the world where you can endlessly give, where you endlessly care. And you won't be exhausted, I promise. We'll close with the sound of Om. Deep breath in. Sliding the thumbs up to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste. Thank you guys so, so much. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms and to everybody who in any way taking care of others, right? <laughs>